The following tutorial is brought to you by WholeLoops.com. It's production time. I'm Reed Stefan, realist puppet in the game. Today, I'm breaking down the four types of auxiliary channels in Ableton. I'm talking about sends, returns, buses, and groups. And we're gonna take a closer look at the similarities and differences, and also figure out why and when you would wanna use each one in your mixing workflow. So let's jump right into the sauce. The demonstration material is a disrespectful track that I produced for my friend Easy McCoy. And as you could see here in the Ableton session, I use groups a lot. And this is something that is not completely unique to Ableton, but something that I think they really took to the next level with the ability to create collapsible groups within groups. And not only is it a visual folder that allows you to hide or expand them, but it's also a signal flow folder that allows you to solo, mute, or process them. So let's play this song from the hook and we could solo the vocals group. With me, best you summer fine. Yes, you want a mine. This is my time. And that's the vocals group soloed. So in that respect, a group technically is the same as a bus because what a bus is is a destination for a bunch of sound sources to then get summed up. This master chain is the bus for all of this music production to end up at. I can't minimize my whole music production by minimizing this bus. So functionality wise does the same thing as a group whereas a bus doesn't really have that visual implication of showing or hiding what's within it a bus is pretty much just for audio uses only group has audio and visual uses so that's a bus in a group but i want to talk a little bit more about what buses can do because there's obviously a lot more than just bussing your entire master together for example the plugins i'm using here to master this song are actually two instances of ozone master sauce in a row with some of the things in the middle turned off and then that's going into two different analyzer plugins this is my time yeah. And these are really handy for seeing how loud and how wide your mix is. And when I'm finalizing my mix, I like to use reference mixes. And this is another trick that bussing is extremely useful for. So let's say I wanna reference this version to my released version of 100K. So we're gonna drop this in here. It's getting double mastered because all of my ozone instances that I needed for my song that I'm working on are affecting this. So this is where a pre-master bus would come in very handy. And to create a bus channel, you just create an audio channel and you use it as a bus by routing things to it. So let's just title it pre-master and let's send our groups of production to the pre-master and send this to the pre-master. And we'll just hit the in button on here and now before we listen to it, we just got to grab our mastering plugins, but we're going to leave our analyzers down on the master channel, drop them up here on the pre-master. So now when we listen to our reference material, oh, 100K, 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 I mean, we're gonna never day. 100K, 100K, I shine, this is my time. You ain't taking nothing from me, this is my time. So that's the major useful implication of bussing your song to a pre-master bus over sending everything to your master bus is the ability to use your metering plugins to meter your reference material and the mix that you're working on. So that's buses and groups, and we're gonna to touch on them a little bit at the end too. But before we do that, I wanna to touch on auxes and sends. Now think of these as chains on the side, not really side chains, but instead of a chain for everything to end up at, like my ozone master sauce instances, think of this as a chain on the side to be mixed in. 
Do your drums sound like floppy trash? Have you wasted countless hours trying to get that knocking mix down with no results? Introducing Whole Loops Drum Sauce, the brand new preset that instantly processes your drums group into a clean, organic, and hard-hitting sauce. Whole Loops Drum Sauce is available now for Waves Studio Rack and Ableton Stock plugins only at wholeloops.com. So let's say, for example, I wanted to create one quarter note plugin to send all these vocals to because I felt like they all needed a quarter note. I could create a return channel by using the keyboard shortcut Command Option T. And then down here at the bottom, we just created return A, which is our return. And then up here, this is our send. Now, without a send, the return wouldn't hear anything. And without the return, the send would have nowhere to send it to. So they're not really two separate things. They're more two halves of the same process that work together. And let's dial in some quarter notes. I think that feedback will be good. I'm going to use ping pong, but slow it down. Maybe just a tiny little bit of reverb. I just love this plugin and we'll use the ducking here too to get them out of the way. Why not even a little bit of wobble too? When you're dealing with rapping, you can get away with wobble. When you're dealing with singing, it kind of makes the delays out of tune. But like I said, let's check this vocal out through these quarter note delays. Now I can get it jumping when it's crunch time. Yeah, I'm all about it on the front line. I put that work in, yeah, I done time. I'm 24 7, never sometime. I'm looking. Might even sauce these delays up with a couple of plugins. Maybe put a flanger after it and a redux before it. Now I can get it jumping when it's crunch time. Yeah, I'm all about it on the front line. I put that work in, yeah, I done time. I'm 24 7, never sometime. I'm looking like the light, like the sunshine. I got my city looking good like the summertime. And I ball. The downside of using sends and returns is I'm just going to keep hitting T. After you've created 12, they cut you off. So. Don't plan on anything that's going to require using more than 12 instances because if you're going to combine three reverbs with four different delays, that's already more than half of them right there. And then you're not going to have any left for other mixed things. And also one thing I really don't like about this is you have to remember, okay, the slap delays on I and then you're up here at your vocals. You're going like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay, this is my slap delay. My projects really don't have more than two anymore. I would much prefer to do a chain like this up on the group itself. And now this is where groups and sends and returns have some overlap too, because you could take a chain of plugins and now we've just made a group out of this chain of plugins and created an aux right here on the group. So we can delete both of these. Double up, twice, share, double time. I put it on the line when I go for mine. Ain't no stopping me, yes, yeah, go time. I go hard. Now, one of the downsides of this method is you couldn't really be selective as to which channels in the group were getting this quarter note delay. Whereas if you had it down here on a return where we used to, you would have been able to go and pick like the individual ones. Like I could have put all the easy vocals and then maybe just this one care vocal into the quarter note delay. So that's really one of the advantages of putting a delay down here on a return. And as you've seen in my other videos, I pretty much almost always choose to do my parallel processing and auxiliary effects, as you could call them, right here as an audio effect rack rather than clogging up down here with return tracks. However, there are some situations where I do always, always use a return track. And that would be for my mix glue for compression and harmonics. So let's create two uh, command option T and command option T again, a CLA 76 to do some mix glue and an Aphex Vintage Exciter. I know right away that I like these to be super quiet and it seems like a ridiculous amount to turn it down minus 30, but we're going to put this in aux mode and maybe just bump this up a little bit. And the settings on here are actually, maybe I'll sp speed this up a little bit. And this is actually pretty much what I'm looking for. So when I do mix glue, which is parallel compressing my whole mix together, I like to do what's called mix minus sub. So that means everything but the 808 pretty much. So I'm gonna send my entire vocals group, close that, 
and in my instrumentals group I have my tracks grouped out into even more groups and I'll also highlight these and send them both to the second aux and before we listen to this it's important to make sure we don't forget to send our auxes to the pre-master if we're using a pre-master bus but if you're just sending it to the regular old master bus then you can skip this step and let's take a listen to what these are doing with it off and then we'll turn it on So there you have it. Those are the four types of auxiliary channels in Ableton, groups, buses, sends, and returns. I hope this helped you understand the difference and figure out when and why you might want to use each one in your mixing workflow. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below, and I'll catch you guys next time with another tutorial. Peace out.